Ladies and gentlemen, this man on your screen is Brian Johnson, a 47-year-old tech multimillionaire, anti-aging, reverse aging champion who wants to live at the heart of a 37-year-old, the skin of a 28-year-old. Recently, he posted a series of pictures asking a question, have your therapies ever gone wrong? And these are the three images, photographs of himself that he posted. I'll explain these photographs in a bit. I got really lean and lost a lot of fat, especially on my face. My biomarkers were improving, but I looked gaunt. He explained in his post, people thought I was on the brink of death. And then he goes through this project baby fat. We'll come to that in a bit. Now he went as you know, very loosely put this face job, but it isn't as simple as a face job. But nonetheless, he went through this Project Baby Fat as an experiment which used a donor's fat because he didn't have any fat in his own body, aimed to counteract the effect of stringent 1950 calorie diet, as opposed to what would be around usually a 2500 calorie um, required ordinarily, which had left him a gaunt appearance. That's what he says, that once he lost so much of weight, he was left with an extremely gaunt appearance. Which, by the way, is despite his positive impact on the biomarkers of how his body was functioning. According to Brian Johnson himself, who's a multi-millionaire, the immediate or rather a temporary aftermath of this project baby fat the fat injections into his body had left him puffy. In his words, his face started blowing up, getting worse and worse, till he couldn't even see. Till the next seven days, this went on for seven days. That's when Brian Johnson said his face was back to being normal. Why did he do this? Yes, he looked gaunt, but he also said they figured facial fat is very important for how youthfulness is perceived, how youth is perceived. Brian Johnson with his anti-aging project Blueprint has not only invested $3 million in anti-aging research, but has infused himself with biofluids, plasma of his 17-year-old son to help reverse his age. But just not that. Brian Johnson donated his own plasma to his father, claiming his father subsequently reverse aged. Crucial to this is Brian Johnson's diet. A diet. That's right. A diet which is strictly 1950 calories. A vegan diet consuming food within six hour window eats between 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. Focusing on nutrient-dense food. He claims he eats or consumes lentils, vegetables, berries, nuts, seeds, extra virgin olive oil, avoid sugar and processed food. And pops in, here's the word, pops in, 104 supplement pills every single day every single day. Now, mission looking good or mission looking young has is not new. Look at Elon Musk. He's not gone through the knife for any changes in his physical body, but he lost 50 pounds. In fact, um, he is against anti-aging hype, if I must put this very clearly, but he was appreciated world over for the way he lost his weight, uh, uh, lost his weight, regained his strength. Ariana Grande shared experiences with cosmetic procedures quite publicly aimed at maintaining youthfulness. Demi Moore publicly discussed her use of anti-aging treatments. And these are just few celebrities I've named in India itself. You've had several cases where either treatments have gone wrong or treatments have even led to fatalities. But this is so much more than just plastic surgery or just cosmetic surgery. There is so much more to this. Let's try and look at what is really unfolding before us. I'm being joined at this point by Dr. Veena Singh, who is the HOD for Plastic Surgery, Ames Patna. 
Dr. Chinu Agarwal, who is a psychologist and psychotherapist, director for Feeling Minds. Dr. Shikha Sharma, who is a senior nutritionist, as well as Shreya Narayanan, who is an actress. Thank you very much, all four of you, for joining us. Um, there are many people who follow this very closely. They may be doing it physically, practicing this physically or not. They may be aspiring to do this or not. But nonetheless, this is something which is very closely followed on the social media. Look at the kind of uh, followers in India or abroad when it comes to what Brian Johnson is doing. Of course, it piques a lot of interest with all of this. But firstly, let me just come in at this point, Dr. Veena Singh. Dr. Veena Singh, how different is what Brian Johnson is doing to how an ordinarily an ordinary celebrity, you know, ordinarily what a celebrity would do as part of a cosmetic change. How different are the two? Are the two different, firstly, in intent and in procedure? So, hi, Sneha. And uh, tonight you have brought a very, very important topic that how science differs from an unscientific fact. So, why, what uh, Brian Johnson did was an hmm. unscientific part because... See, fat grafting is very much established in plastic surgery. Whenever there is a hollowness, a cavity-like appearance, not only on face, but even anywhere in the body, we do inject the fat. But that is the fat which is being taken from the patient's body to avoid the chances of rejection. And here, Brian Johnson went wrong. He hmm. used someone else's fat that left uh, led to a very hypersensitive allergic reaction, which was very obvious by seeing the swelling, mm. the severity of swelling he was having. If uh, he would have taken some immunosuppressants at that time, maybe this swelling would not have been that much. So using fat of someone else, citing that he doesn't have that much fat, he could have used those fat grafting in stages rather than using someone else's fat in one stage, he could have taken his own fat in some amount mm. and did the similar thing in different stages, maybe two, three multiple stages, something like that. So this was a, a very unscientific uh, move of his. And uh, I have been following him for quite some time. See, ultimately, a normal celebrity would go for a healthy diet and exercise regime, and obviously, uh, for a rigorous uh, lifestyle therapy also, so that uh, they can have a stress-free life, which makes not only you internally healthy, but also look externally healthier, healthier compared to your own age group. So only working on the anti-aging chemicals, I would say, like the plasma concept, which he was citing for his father, See, plasma has growth factors. They do have indications mm. for few diseases. But this does not have any indication for anti-aging because obviously the growth factors have a lifetime. I mean, a life duration. They are not going to stay forever. So that is a very fine distinction is there when you cross the border of scientific principles and what Brian Johnson did. So it was a very natural side effect. That's, of that's very interesting. And uh, that, it that's, was just that's very in interesting. But Dr. Veena saying one one quick question: Is it? Are you calling it unscientific because it has not been done in this manner before? Is that also a reason why you may be calling it unscientific that this is not something that would usually be the norm when plastic surgery has to be done in terms of fat, fat grafting? Yes. So actually, not only fat grafting, any tissue, any organ which you are taking from someone else's body has to be seen for its compatibility, mm. number one. The second thing is that that transfer needs to be combined right. with immunosuppressive therapy. So I am not aware about the compatibility test, which whether he underwent or not, but obviously he did not underwent the immunosuppressant. Mm. Otherwise, the severity of reaction would not have been that much, what we can see on his face. And that's why I'm calling it okay. unscientific. All right. Okay. Okay. Let me just get in at this point, uh, Dr. Shikha Sharma. Dr. Shikha Sharma, another important aspect to what Brian Johnson does, what Brian Johnson propagates, and it's not just Brian Johnson. Actually, this is 
a very common link to various diets that are following. Of course, Brian Johnson, you may say, is doing something very extreme in terms of the calorie deficit at, that, at what he's maintaining. But a calorie deficit diet is something that is increasingly popular across diets that one consumes, even if one doesn't go into extreme diets, calorie deficit is a very critical aspect. How important is this aspect to being well-being? One, of course, is the extremity of what Brian Johnson has done. And the other is, how welcome is this for daily living? See, firstly, let me uh, bring it here that the concept of calories is completely unscientific. It is based on a strange experiment in which food is burnt in a bomb calorie meter and the rise in temperature is called a calorie. Now, this is completely unscientific because this is not what happens in the body. In the body, uh, being a medical doctor, I'll explain that metabolism happens, which is not something where food is burnt. So food does not turn uh, into carbon, uh, into ash in the body. It is metabolized, which is that all the vitamins, minerals are extracted and they're rearranged to form hormones, cells, and other things. So unfortunately, when we talk about a calorie, we call everything, uh, uh, you know, it is unscientific because uh, something which is coming out of, uh, say, a chicken is the same as uh, something coming out of a, uh, a plant, which is not the same. Because at the end of the day, every amino acid, every, uh, every uh, uh, you know, fatty acid, they are, they are at, a, at a very molecular level, uh, slightly different from when they come from a vegan source or they come from an animal source or they come from other sources. So when we bundle, them, bundle all of them as one, as a calorie, it is not the same. So having said that, what essentially means is that our body has supreme intelligence, supreme meaning it can, it can actually take out amino acids from food, it can take out essential fatty acids, it can take out vitamins. So when we talk about a, of, of a nutritious diet, we have to understand that that diet has to be well balanced in terms of our essential needs, essential fatty acids we need to be, essential amino acids we need. So when all that is not done and we just restrict the diet, I'll give you an example, sugar has very low calorie and we all know how fattening sugar is. And it is because of this erroneous calorie concept that sugar has been labeled as low calorie. So when we talk about a nutritious diet, when we talk about a calorie dense diet, we mm. talk about vitamins, minerals, and proper balance in each thing. Like for example, these days, curcumin, which is And sugar is from, a huge killer, uh, according to a lot of research. Yes, absolutely. Because you see, uh, nutrition is not a, such a reductionist thing that you can just say, okay, 500 calorie, 1000 calorie, what is inside that? That is most important. And unfortunately, and also I would like to, uh, you know, bring out one more aspect is, if he was having 100 supplements, what about the synthetics in those supplements? Because supplements no, no, well, it's, Dr. Shikha, preservatives. that's an important part, but let me bring that question in because I have to lay the context for that also, Dr. Shikha. You're coming to a very important point, but let me just lay that for the viewers also. Look at the diet, if we can have that diet up on our screen as well, of what Brian Johnson consumes. Let's just look at that. He, look, he consumes lentils, vegetables, berries, nuts, seeds, extra virgin oil. These are what his priorities are. So, you know, you, you had him serve out, put out his menu for the next three, four days, and then you had different kind of chickpeas, something, and it was largely vegan of all the sorts. He says dense um, nutrient food. He goes back to all of these things that he specifies. And then you are consuming 104 supplement pills a day. Here's my point. And it is very important for everybody who's watching because we are also in an era where people are increasingly popping in supplements. So here's a question. Do you eat less and get in more supplements? Does that just, is that a good enough substitute for your body to function? I would say not at all because supplements are synthetics. And in fact, a lot of research has shown that when you have a lot of supplements, they are not beneficial at all. So in the hospital, we used to give iron or B-complex supplement for women who had low hemoglobin or who had other deficiency. But we never told them that this is all you will have. Because at the end of the day, the, the absorption from natural food is much better than a supplement. And in fact, a lot of research has gone there that having a lot of supplements is of no additional value, of no benefit at all. And 100 supplements, if he was having those many, I would say he was also consuming a lot of synthetic chemicals through those supplements 
in terms of the the capsule or the preservatives or the or other things which go into a supplement having said that i also think that extremes hmm. of any kind do not lead to health so extreme behavior of any kind would never yield a healthy hmm. result and that we have seen in many other areas also when people go to extremes of transformation and they inject uh, hormones they in, uh, they start having a diet which is completely imbalanced they would only have chicken and egg whites and they would not have water they would not have other things so what right. i'm trying to say is these extremes are unhealthy by itself right all right very quickly before i go to the other panelists dr veena singh a quick question to your minute to you is it increasingly now becoming a norm where people want to look feel younger of course as i said brian johnson is possibly in another extreme where he's where he believes that he is leading a movement towards anti reversing or reverse aging as it was sorry about that reverse aging and anti aging but we'll have to see how that goes eventually but is it now increasingly an aspirational ambition for people who are even coming to you for that matter so i tell you like looking good looking younger looking beautiful has been established from the starting of this human era but nowadays like for the last few decades mm. what we have seen is that apart from the external appearance people want to look skin good they just don't want to decorate themselves rather they want to have a radiating skin a healthy skin so yes there has been consciousness i would rather call it as a consciousness people are more aware they are taking care of their lifestyle their skin their body their stamina everything they are taking care of so and it is good but majority of them right. are like okay. are like only for increasing their stamina and their confidence also many few would be for looking good hmm. i would say okay okay dr chinu agarwal how would you look at this dr chinu agarwal um uh, here's a young man not not young uh, i mean 47 is young let's take it into his era it is young and he's he's aspiring to be younger he's aspiring to be fitter he's aspiring to never die um he's aspiring for the sky some may say but he's saying it's as real as it can get dr chinu agarwal psychologically what does one look at what brian johnson is doing and those who would follow something like that look at is it real is it delusional is it the next real what is it thank you for this question uh, see when i see from the psychology perspective i see things in two ways one is it functional is it actually gaining or giving some value adding some value to your life or is it dysfunctional when i i have not followed him and today is the first day that i came to know that someone like him exists and he has got so many followers and he's doing all these things but the concept is not new to me as a psychologist because evolutionary perspective okay. is there in this concept where we all don't want to die we want to keep on living and that's why mm. human species has got a great survival instinct where we want our progeny to be living and we want to keep living through some means or the other and looking young and looking good also has an evolutionary perspective where we know that you know we want to attract mates mm. we want to be attractive to the opposite gender and you know uh, some reproductive value is there but when i say about functionality and dysfunctionality whenever there is something so rigid that you know it almost looks like an obsession then i suspect hmm. that there is some psychological pathology over here it may be something related to body dysmorphic disorder where a person gets preoccupied or obsessed with this uh, some part of the body or beauty mm. or you know um, uh, looking younger and uh, there is a no, lot there of there is a trend increasingly questions. to this 
So I mean, yes. is it a is it a normal? You uh, because quite frankly, for some of us, it may be dis dis dysfunctional. It, it is, for some yeah, of us, it, it may be it really the functional way of moving on in life. I mean, who decides yeah. what's dysfunctional, what's not, fu uh, what's what's functional? The science decides it, and so scientifically, when we look at it. Mm. Living has a purpose. It has got a meaning. It has got something that adds value to your own life and to others' lives. And so he may be thinking that if he succeeds in all these experiments, he will be able to bring a you hmm. know revolution or transformation through technology where okay. nobody is going to die and everybody is going to live and every everybody is going to okay. be young. Nobody is going to grow older. But it, right. uh, it seems to be a little overstretched idea. And um, to me, it looks like an obsession. One more thing I want to add is that when okay. we are looking okay, at... Okay, Dr. Shinu, just give me some time. You know, Let me just go to Shreya of... Narayanan, just to see how she reflects on what you are saying as well. Uh, Shreya Narayanan, you're from an industry which has very high stakes when it comes to how one looks, how one feels, how one portrays oneself. How do you look at what what's happening in this reverse aging, um, you know, universe, if we may say, of the peaking interests in all of this? And how do you as celebrities really stay off the knife given a choice? Uh, first of all, I want to say that uh, there is a reason that Brian Johnson is doing all this. He's an entrepreneur. So we are all following him because if he's mm. able to carry on like this for 10 years, he's certainly going to come up with his own supplements, his own lines of creams, his own line of everything. So what everybody needs to understand is he is doing this for business. He's doing this because tomorrow is going to pay him huge mm. because everybody wants to look young and ev uh, this whole mm. anti-aging movement is, um, is very, very strong now. And it is already bearing a lot of results. A lot of people are doing... If you're able to get even a little mm. of a magic cream or a magic uh, supplement, he is going to make so much of money, all this is going to be totally worth it. Now, that's the first point. There's a purpose to it. For normal people, I don't <laughs> think that okay. it is possible for anybody to keep on doing this on a daily basis. It is crazy to pop in 104 supplements and all, all always, you know, check your biomarkers. This is not possible. So for normal people... Uh, you know, we are going to follow the same things, eat, sleep, exercise, you know, do right. But yes, it's true that today, if somebody has a hair fall, when we discuss it, we are like, oh, what is Brian Johnson telling about the hair fall thing? If somebody says, oh, th you know, this is the this is the issue they are facing. Oh, by the way, he did make some claim about it, that Johnson he's able to reverse uh, hair so fall I and baldness. I think he said that as well, if I'm correct. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. And he's even told what are the, uh, you know, what, what are the chemicals or what are the products he's been using. Now, everybody is going and seeing all that and actually starts using it. So for Brian Johnson, it is very important that he he stays in the responsible limit so that people don't. Now, right now, what he's done, he's gone and injected something in his face. Now, those cells are from some other person. And as uh, Dr. Veena Singh said, that, uh, it, you know, you have, you have to take certain precautions. A lot of people are going to go and copy him or try all this stuff and think, because today, in the times of social media, there is no tomorrow. People are not thinking of future. People are thinking, today I have to look good. Today I have to get famous. Today I have to achieve these things. And, the, and I feel that today... Everybody feels that they need to be seen today. They need to get there today. So today, people are not following those things, which, um, you know, you're talking about actors, but actors, we we just can't afford all this. We ca cannot just inject. I mean, if you want to look good mm. on in the long run, you'll have to go through it, the normal, traditional way of exercising. And so everybody is doing all that. But yes, certainly, I'll say that Brian Johnson 
Everybody checks right. him out. He is important today. Everybody wants to know what happens. And in 10 years, he, if he's able to, um, I'm 100% sure he's going to come up with his own line of every product and sell huge and make a lot of money. So this is all for money. Okay, so Dr. Shikha Sharma, that's a very interesting view, but I very quickly want to ask you something. Nothing dries away from the fact that one needs to be it's as healthy out. as one can. It's come out. And in today's world, that is almost is something that has yeah, become an uh, ambition in itself. You know, whether you're working, whether you're not working, to be fit, to be healthy is... Is, is of utmost importance. Some are able to pursue it, some are not able to pursue it, but it is of huge interest. And everybody knows the fact, if you want to not go to hospitals, you better take care of your health. This generation is possibly the most aware when it comes to, but hugely challenging when it comes to face all these things. Dr. Dr. Shikha Sharma, in even what Brian Johnson is doing, to those who may, who may disagree with what he is doing, there is a very important messaging of how I mean, okay, he may say that his algorithms make his body function. His function, his body functions on algorithms. He may say that. But the other side is of how much of importance he gives to health, including sleep, including food. Some may say in a very warped way, but that's, that's up for debate. But there's an, there is a silver line to this as well. Firstly, I would like to say that, uh, uh, you know, eating healthy, looking better, feeling better, and uh, having your biomarkers in place, there is nothing wrong with it. But, you know, I would equate this with the lottery scheme. Like a lot of people who buy lottery buy because they don't, uh, they don't want to work hard. They just want an instant lottery. Similarly, this whole industry where there are magic creams, pills, potions, and these magic supplements. So these are delusional. They are delusional because they promise something that without doing much effort, here is a magic cream I'm getting or a pill or this or that. And overnight, you can become uh, youthful or this or that. And it's not a new thing. Since hundreds of years, snake oil is being sold and, and all these things are being done because they ba basically prey on insecurities of people who say we can't have the time and effort to do all that. So let's buy this magic potion. And it's right. I think he's just doing it because if he can get it mm. even 5% uh, right, he will be a billionaire again with all that money. So I, what the only message I can give is that the human body is a beautiful, uh, uh, very intelligent machine, very, very intelligent. And therefore, you can't fool around with the body. Uh, the things which are good for you, of course, uh, natural fresh food and a balanced nutrition plan and a scientific plan is what makes it work, along with sleep, stress management, exercise. It's good to be conscious, but it's, I think it's also important not to be delusional. Because uh, once you get delusional, then you start believing that there is a magic potion out there which will help me get youthful in it, you know, in just uh, a short while. Right. Okay. Right. I think all of you have made such important points. I just want to, there's another aspect to this about how surgeries can go awfully wrong in this particular case. At least it, it, the, the temporary symptoms, as he called it, lasted for only seven days. It can just last on for months, for years whatsoever. I know that there's lots to talk about that, Dr. Veena. I wish I could come to you on that. We're totally out of time. But I think one big takeaway of what Brian Johnson himself has said and it just, it should leave us pondering that his biomarkers were doing great with whatever he was trying to do, being the product, the experiment himself. But people perceived um, a gaunt face as not something being healthy. So again, appearance playing a hugely important marker for what he claimed his biomarkers doing very well. Dr. Veena Singh, Dr. Chinu Agarwal, Dr. Shikha Sharma, as well as Shreya Narayanan, thank you very much to adding so much to this discourse. Thank you very much. It's time for a very short break. On the other side, we'll bring you all the latest.